Edmont, Q- tell, me about, tell me about this door. Uh, is it Tinkle, Finkle, Dinkle, Doo. No, it doesn't open to Tinkle, Finkle, Dinkle, Doo. How about Malagranatum? How about that? Yes. It opens up, revealing another sleeping quarter beyond. Again, currently unoccupied. Unoccupado. Well, I mean, so what this tells to what this tells me is that I assume these boxes are just going to hold two bell focuses again. No, these are foot lockers. Oh, so they would hold personal effects for the for the men staying in this room. But uh, I mean, just rooting through them, just dirty clothes, incidentals, nothing of value. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna peruse that too closely. Evie's taking everybody's underwear. No, that, that's not an easy thing. He's got a big pile of guess, the better house. I guess what this says to me is that this malagranatum might indicate a a tier of sorts to the perhaps the that this is just to the rank and file that has access to these spaces. I think that's a good assumption. Yeah, I imagine that these like Locked doors that have require a specific word. They may be the rooms that belong to the higher ups. Would be. That's their private quarters. Right. Can we just try to open this one, Malagranatum? Uh, I don't believe that'll open, but let me double check because you always, always, always want to double check. Sure. It does not. Okay. How about this one? This door opens up into a small storage room, small cellar area. It looks like you've got perishables in here. In one corner, you have uh, hooks attached to the ceiling from which you're dangling haunches of meat. In another, you have large baskets filled with uh, grain, dried vegetables, this sort of thing. Cold storage, uh, or is it? It's no colder in here than any other particular room. Okay. And the last thing in here is a large ceramic urn filled with potable water. Okay. About this door. Malagranatum? Uh, okay. The door opens and roll, a, mark. roll initiative. Well, at least we got through everything else before. At least we're not getting ambushed from behind. Completely. Opening this room, it looks like another storage chamber, but this one looks like... uh, uh, dry storage, non-perishable goods. And one of the cultists is in the room, turns to face you as the door opens. Who's at the top of my order? Uh, first up, we've got Evie at 22, followed by Edmont. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Is this one of the guys who looks like he's going to explode? It's a man wearing red robes. I look at him, I say, do you hear, have you heard how many explosions there have been? Do I even look hurt? Now, this can go two ways. You can either surrender or you can blow yourself up. It does not matter to me. Which one do you want to do? And in dark, dark and ease, well, what language are you speaking to him? Dark and ease. He spits back in dark and ease. So we do not negotiate with the enemies of God. All right, you do your thing, man, and I'll stand right here. Okay. Was talking to him my action? No. Oh, okay. Now I'll let you be not turning him to explode because that's that's pretty fucking hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll bash him with my sword a little bit. Ten minutes ago, Evie's like, "Don't you dare kill anybody!" Now she's like, "Go ahead and blow up, fucker." I know I you want. I gave this guy a chance to surrender. I'm not gonna hit him lethally, but I'll hit him. Okay. Uh, let's see, twenty three enough to hit him? Oh yes. All right, he's going to take 11 points of magical piercing. And that is enough to knock him unconscious. All right, yeah. 
as he falls to the ground. And you can see his stomach heaving in an unnatural way that tells uh, you that it's not sorry, simply I'm... his breath. But it's not swelling out outwardly. Uh, you're pretty sure that unless you disturb this man, as long as you leave him inert, I mean, nothing bad will happen to you. He's still probably completely screwed at the end of the day. Uh, yeah. can, I use, can... <clears throat> can I use a medicine check and a cast of Lesser Restoration to take the bomb out of him like we did with our own people? Yeah, go ahead. Make me a medicine check. You got it. So I can throw guidance on this. So that doesn't take concentration. It's a 16. Okay, and you're expending a spell slot to cast Lesser Restoration? Uh, from the staff, but yeah. Okay, and you do so, and the enchantment that causes the man to be able to detonate himself escapes his body safely as a cloud of particularly gnarly flatulence. Ew. I'm going to let that clear for a minute, and then do we want to restore him to a point where we can interrogate him? Uh, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Let's uh, take moves any in. spell focus he has or anything like that. No, he doesn't. Okay. Edmont moves in. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I misspoke. He would, in fact, have a spell focus. Well, I'll take that from him. Edmont, Otherwise, he can't get around his own house. You got him in the manacles. He's yeah. unconscious on the ground in front of you. Do we wait for him to regain conscious or consciousness, or do we slap him awake? If you just give him one hit point, or if you make a successful medicine check to stabilize him properly, he'll be able to speak haltingly. Uh, let's do another medicine. Okay. So, that's going to be a big old 24. Yeah, no, he's going to have a rough purple thump on his noodle where Evie knocked him to the ground. But other than that, uh, you spend a few moments and you're able to get him to come around his eyes flickering, unable to focus. You can tell his head is swimming. Evie says, I have saved you. He looks up at Evie. The High Aether has saved me. Saved you from what? Myself. Was it your dream to explode yourself? To kill someone you've never met? He tells you that it was his dream to deliver himself to the enemies of God. Why do you believe that we're the enemies of God? He shakes his head. He says, I don't believe it. I know it. How do you know that then? Because it's what you've been told? Yeah, effectively. He starts repeating some of the decrees that he has heard, which sounds to your ears like the same extremist propaganda that you were dealing with way back in Brennanine. Evie, what are you doing in here? Mr. Warner's around the corner. I have supervision. I'm supervising you, though. Do, do, do you think we have time to sit around and philosophize with these people? I'm not philosophizing with them. Uh, he's know sitting there talking. people are trying to kill us. You know why they're trying to kill us. Victor does have a... a, a yeah, no. All right, fool. Here's how this is going to work. You're going to tell us how to get around this place. Why would I do that? Because I'll take off one of your fingers if you don't. Can we hurry up, guys? He holds up his hand, reaches out towards Victor. How many would you yeah. like? I give all of myself to God. Ekon sighs dismissively. Victor walks over with the dagger out. <laughs> uh, uh, hang on, hang on. Listen, this is not the will of God. You have been deceived. He shrugs you know, but doesn't answer. It's easy to talk about God when you don't actually pay the price. Victor grabs his hand. What the hell? Genie. Yeah. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, sure. Does Orson need to make this as well? I'm not going to let Orson make it. He's an NPC. Uh, that is a 21, I think. Yeah, 21. Standing back in the sanctuary room, 
and you start hearing the bad stuff trademark going down inside the dry goods storage. However, off to your right in your periphery, you think you can hear light footfalls echoing from the direction of this staircase. Uh, Genie will whistle. Roll initiative. All right. How many initiative? Oh, I have to roll three. Uh, that is a... These rolls keep getting worse and worse. Hold on, I have to make some marks on my map here. Okay. Oh, I need all new... This is fine. <sighs> I have a red one. I need... Mm -hmm. A pink one. And I need to make a brown one. Which I think I made out of this yellow one. Yellow is basically just brown. Okay. And I will copy. Oh, that was wrong. Tabletop simulator is hard. Okay. We should definitely use a much better... So, Ginny, mm -hmm. you let a whistle. And so yep. nobody is surprised. Who's at the top of my order? First up, we've got Ginny at 22. Uh, I am going to... Hold an action mm -hmm. to Firebolt. Uh, you know what? No, I'm going to hold an action to cast the web spell centered here when three or more individuals are in the area. When it would ca when it would catch three or more individuals. It, no, no, you know that's too complicated. Just fire. I'm going to hold an action fire bolt. Okay. You can hold uh, an action to fire a web. That's perfectly reasonable. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, but like. I, I understood what you meant without any clarification, so you go ahead and do that if you want. Okay, yeah. Centered here. Okay. When when it would affect three or more individuals. All right. At the end of Genie's turn? Yep. Three or more unfriendly individuals. Understood. <laughs> Who's next? After Genie, we've got uh, Orson with Ekon on deck. Orson's going to dodge. Okay. Who's next? Uh, Ekon, can I use my action to just knock this guy back out? Like, I just brought him out of consciousness. He's helpless, effectively, right? I'm going to... I'll say... I'm going to give him a saving throw, considering he's sure. just been knocked unconscious with blunt force trauma. Doing it a second time. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to try and... Because it sounds like something's going down. Ekon just wants this situation to not be immediately... Yeah, you can ring his bell Sorry. or knock him out. As long as you have a way yeah, to Ekon just wrapped wonders. the staff back across the back of his neck. Okay. Yeah, he slumps back against the back wall. 20, 25. Uh, I will move to there. Where and all you I know is the genie whistle. whistle. That's, that's it. Yeah. Genie's genie's point. Uh, genie's pointing at the the stairs. Which stairway? The spiral stair down here. Yeah. The, yeah. And I guess Orson's and running I, in that direction. So. And Ekon's gonna stand back here then for a little more cover. So that's the end of Ekon. Actually, let's not be in the way of the door. Okay. Actually. Uh, since Ekon can't get anywhere effective, he looks out this door, sees that he can't get any more, more effective, ends his turn. We got Edmont with Evie. Edmont. The unconscious man does not have a threat range. I can spread, I can fan out getting across the room over to here. And I'm going to take my action to hide. So, like hiding behind that pillar? Yeah. Hey, go ahead and give me that roll. So to be clear, you'll be hidden from anybody coming up or down these stairs, but if somebody like comes around this corner, not so much. Correct. Gotcha. Unless you're using like magic monk bullshit to go invisible. Uh, yeah, I was meaning to ask you, it just kept getting distracted. The lighting situation, how is that? Is is every is are we bright? Are we dim? It's about as bright. 
it's about as bright as these torch sconces. So each of these torch sconces are giving off, what is it, five feet of bright light, then like 20 feet of dim or something like that. Okay. So there's, you can also see considerable shadows in the room. For example, this space here would be completely in shadow as long as this door is not open. Okay. So yeah, uh, you can you can almost pretty much assume dim light unless you want to warp directly to one of the sconces. Okay. Okay, and yeah, that's going to be uh, 22 on stealth. Okay. So you duck around the pillar. Who's next? Uh, next up, we've got Evie with purple on deck. 5, 10, 15. Can I see what's coming from here? No. Okay. Then I think... Yeah, uh, I can hide as a bonus action. Okay. I'll do that. So if you're hiding in that square, ducking behind this pillar here, you'll be hiding from anybody coming up or down these stairs, but anybody coming back here can very easily see you. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I, uh, I got a... I don't think I've ever rolled stealth before. With a rogue. I got an 11. I didn't do that well. Okay. But, That's probably the lowest stealth roll I've ever heard of a rogue rolling in 5th edition. I don't have any specialty in it. I, I t Evie talks at things ineffectively. Uh, I think you still and, have an action if you like to. Yeah. Or I'm a bonus running action. an action. If I see a bad guy that comes into range of my knives, I'm going to throw a knife at it. Okay. Who's next? Uh, next up, we've got purple with red on deck. Uh, Evie, that's going to trigger your held action. Uh -huh. As a man comes up from down the stairs. Yeah, I will throw a knife at him. Okay. Do it. That is a 21 to hit. Bear with me half a second here. 21, we'll hit. All right. He takes eight points of magical piercing. Okay. Only eight? It's not a sneak attack. You're hidden. You get advantage on this roll. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, let me just see so if first I roll again. Let's give a crit. Yep. Yeah. If you, I've, if you never make, I've never had to do that before. If you make an attack while hidden, you get sure. advantage on, that, on your attack roll, but you are no longer hidden after the attack. Okay, nope. that's fine. Uh, da, 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 da. Then, in addition to that eight, he takes seventeen more for twenty-five magical piercing total. All right. Yeah, you fling a dagger in his direction, and half a moment later, a second man comes up behind him. Each one of them speaks a magic word to cast a spell. Okay. That's going to do this. Bookkeeping. Their spells have no apparent immediate effect. Who's next? Uh, next up, we've got Red with Victor on deck. Red? No, Red was last campaign. That was like three campaigns ago. Red was point. two campaigns ago. I believe this triggers Genie's held action as a third man comes up the stairs. Yes. All right, so go ahead and draw it out. Uh... For the record, I thought that was a perfectly good held action. Trigger effects. That's what I want to hear. Right. Uh, so it's be 20. Spiderwebs are white. Come on, Trouble. It's just my default color. Oh. Bear with me. So, like. I just but, paid you a compliment, and now this. So it's 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 a 20 foot square, but so it'd be like that. Okay. So you're basically gumming up the whole alcove with the stairs. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's a 20-foot cube, right? So it reaches yeah, up it's, it's, and down yeah. some... Okay. So the stairs yeah. are just over. No more stairs. 
Right. <laughs> Unless, you know, but they're flammable. Uh, I need a uh, saving throw from these gentlemen, and I do believe it is dexterity. I've got a, a 16 pass. No, you need an 18. Then I got three fails. Okay, uh, let me double check that it is dexterity. Yes, it is, and they are restrained. Okay. And they need to uh, basically make a strength check to get out or burn themselves out. If only they had some way to start fires. Uh, If only they had some way to start fires, yeah. Yeah, but they're restrained. Okay, who's next? Next up, we've got... uh, Was that on Red's turn? Did that trigger went off? Oh, yeah, he didn't take an action. He just stepped into space. My bad. Um, it's a strength check to break through. Yeah, DC 18. Yeah, he's going to use his action to do that. He's going to fail, so he's going to stay restrained right there. Yep. That's it. That was Red's turn. Okay. The red guy next to Victor didn't do anything? He's unconscious. He's not... I can knock him back out. Oh, okay. I missed that part. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, Victor. next up after red is Victor with black on deck? It's supposed to be brown, but okay. I'm bad well, at color. Well, that might just be my monitor. Looks like a very dark yellow. That's what brown is. It's very dark yeah. yellow. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, what? it's Victor. Brown isn't up yet. Have you never seen a time lapse of a banana? Go ahead, Victor. <laughs> Uh, you get... uh, so, can Victor hit anything from here, or does he need to step around the corner? Uh, you could attack, I would say, these any of these guys from around the corner, easily okay. enough. Because you could always just peek around the corner, make her attack, then duck back. Um, yeah. Does the web yeah. provide a cover? Uh, no, it does not mention cover, but he does get advantage because they're restrained. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're having a bad day. I, I always pictured it as kind of translucent. So we'll bonus action Hunter's Mork. Switch it over here. Yeah, it, I'm assuming we've been here less than an hour. It says they're lightly obscured. They already work, so you're in dim light. Yeah. Uh, does a 20... 20 hit? Yes. Yay, advantage. Boo ones. That's only going to be 29 points of sonic damage. Uh, which one were you attacking, left or right? Uh, the left one. Okay. Yeah, he was already bloodied. He's having a real bad time. Oh, no, he wasn't bloodied. He now is bloodied. And moving or staying put? Um, I think he's good. I'm taking a step back. Okay. Who's next? Uh, next up, we have Brown with Genie on deck. Okay. I knew that was going to happen. All right, so each of the pillars, as one of the uh, cultist spells takes effect, creatures ooze down out of the pillars. And in fact, well, they can't attack you from inside the pillar. Let's go ahead and... Is this one... Uh, Yeah, that pillar is encased in the web... Yeah. So technically what happened was he entered the web. So just he needs to make a DC 18 dexterity saving throw. On entering or it's ending his turn there? Uh, starting your... Uh, he didn't start his turn in the web. And he's not going yeah. to end his turn there either. Or enters. Starting the turn or entering. Or enters. Okay. Yeah. So that's a strength save? Uh, dex. Dex save. DC is 18, I believe he said. Yep. That is a 16. Okay, he's restrained. So he is restrained. All right. Uh, Edmont, I got one for you. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, 17 to hit Edmont? No. Uh, Jeannie, I got two for you. Okay. Jeannie, I got a nat one. Okay. And a 10. No. Evie, I got two for you. Uh-huh. We, j we just went through this. Look where Victor's standing. Nice and safe. Look where you're standing. <laughs> why this always happens to you. Uh, 13 to hit? No. 19 to hit? Yes. All right. I feel like Birdie and Victor would have like this long conversation about how they do not understand why the other rogue keeps going to the front line. Birdie was way better about staying out of danger than Victor. Like, Vic Birdie would never have allowed anybody to take him into a prison and shave his hair off. Evie, four points of bludgeoning damage, and you are restrained as the thing punches you and covers you with ooze. Okay, so these are the same little goblin things that we've already seen? Yes, the same little slime... You're not sure if they're slime-covered or made out of slime, but they're, they're little mis mischievous goblinoid creatures oozing out of the walls. This one oozes nowhere because he gets caught up in the web as soon as he exits the pillar. Not goblins. They're mephits, again. It's always Mephits. They're my favorite. Yeah. I've used them every, yeah, every, use them every campaign. <laughs> this is the, at least the second time in this one. I threw Mephits at my players in another game, and it was really fun. They're so good. They're, such good. They're great little critters to throw into any encounter at any point. You can always spice up your encounter with some Mephits. <laughs> uh, that's Mephits. Who's next? Uh, after Black, we've got Genie with Orson on deck. After, oh, so I, okay. After me, it's me. Uh, okay, I have my concentration already being used. Let's see. I'm okay. Uh, Genie is going to. You know what? Genie's not going to play around. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, so, I need... I'm throwing a fireball on this square, right here. So, <laughs> this, this, and then everybody upstairs that's around the corner. <laughs> if you put a fireball in this square, that's going to reach... That's going to reach Orson. What, this square? Hold on, what's the range on the fireball? It's a 20-foot radius, isn't it? You count four squares. Drop One, up the two, stairway of four. square. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'll just one extra square up the stairway. Yeah. Oh, that's around the corner. Oh, whichever way, yeah. Whichever way. So, Genie can see both of these squares going up and down, yes. So, yeah, I'm just going to uh, throw a fireball right there. Okay. And uh, using a third level spell slot, that is 8d6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That they can't make a dexterity saving throw on. Yep, that they automatically fail their dex saving throw on. Oof. Uh, two, three, four, six, I lost two of the d6s. <laughs> they just flew off. Here's Plus a d8. Here's the other. I got it. That's fine. Uh, that is 39 points of fire damage, okay. plus an additional 2d4. Good news uh, so that's an additional 7 points of damage, so that's, uh, 39, so it be 46 points of fire damage to these three, and then 39 to anybody else that... Okay, bear with me a moment. Let me see if this guy dies in the Mephit explosion. <laughs> Probably not, but it'd be funny. Okay, give me one moment. Make sure I give you guys... Keep, well, I say you guys, but really... This web is on fire now, right? Genie's doing all the work. There's no web, more. There's no web anymore. Yeah, okay. there's no web, yeah, web anymore. Web is over. Like, the stairs were over, now web is over. Uh, anybody that was in, like, a web it caught on fire, they took seven points of damage. I, like, I don't know. Cause As the, the web burns away. Yeah, the web burns away. Oh, okay. So, like, like so like anybody that was... All, the only, the only one left standing is this this man right here. 
uh, the one who pulled the Mephits out of the pillars. And yeah, he's looking really, really bloodied now. I mean, the fire did not... So he took the fireball, the burning web, and the Mephit death burst. Like a champ. He's still alive, man. Look at that, man. I had full hit points. <laughs> Boy, if uh, only you had the blasty wand. You saw that. Uh, Genie, maybe we're staying put. Uh, Genie is going to... Nobody took any damage last round, did they? No, uh, Eevee did. So the turret's going to hop down and pulse. Eevee took a very small amount of damage. It didn't even get through her shield. Right, yeah, no, I'm going to try to re-up it. Okay. Uh, that, uh, if you, okay. So Edmont, Genie, and Eevee get 13 temp hit points if you have less than that. Genie, that turn counts as your birthday and Christmas present. Nah, I can do it again later. Who's You've next? got Orson with white token. <laughs> Orson is going to... Leave that threat range, it looks like. Is he here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he can take it, it's fine. Okay. Well, remember, you can get restrained if it hits. 19 to hit. Uh, that does not hit Orson. Wow. All oh, right, Orson's a tank. <laughs> uh, does a 25 hit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please take 10 points of piercing damage. And that is enough. Okay. Uh, 10, 15. He moves back. And this Mephit right here does a crit hit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that is 14 points of damage. Okay, and that one is bloodied. And everybody's favorite part, that's a 21 to hit for 8 points of damage from the butt. Okay. Orson moving or staying put? Orson's fine as he is. Orson's oh. done. Who's next? White token with that on. All right. What was Orson saying about being fine? Oh, the statue. Hello, the statue. The figure in the south of the room, as the second spell cast by the cultist completes taking hold, and heat begins to emanate, and bl blue fire erupts from the dais. The figure of Crescent, as a man wreathed in flame, steps off. Uh... Edmond, every square within 30 feet of this creature is bright light. I like that. It's basically the whole room. Everything except for the... Basically everything up to Genie. <laughs> Although that basically kind of poops what, what I was plotting for my turn, so... <laughs> uh, how long can I do this line? Because I am in the... Uh... If I'm in bright light, I can't teleport out of it. Start here. Thing steps down from the dais, turns to the right, holds out its flaming arms, and a gout of flame erupts from the creature, snakes along the floor, engulfs Orson, whips around the Mephit so not to harm it, and then engulfs Edmont. I need both of them... Orson and Edmont, please make a dexterity saving throw. Your DC on this is 15. Ass. Ass. Edmont okay. takes no damage. Why do I only have one D8? Orson doesn't have evasion, right? No, he doesn't. 17 points of fire damage, which Orson can cut in half. That's eight, so he's still got four temp hit points. He's got temp hit points, though. <laughs> Orson actually has, like, proficiency in dexterity saving throws for some reason. Good. Uh, They're very common. Good to have. Is that the end of White's turn? No. Okay. Well, you know what? Stepped off the dais fired at you guys uh orson is going to use his reaction okay 
to that is a 28 to hit okay uh, the guy takes six points of magical piercing damage and i forget does uh the sentinel you don't get to move anywhere trigger get to trigger off of the uh i think that only triggers if he leaves orson's threat range if it hits correct but it doesn't yeah. hit orson's weapon passes harmfully through just as though it were a gout of hot plasma completely oh. incorporeal yikes magic weapons don't work <laughs> it's not good and the thing moves over to the edge of the room next to Evie. Who cannot move? Oh, is Evie restrained again? Yeah. It's like, Evie, change your pants. Come on. How does this keep happening? <laughs> All right. So is that the end of White's turn? Yes. Got Ekon with Edmont. Oh, so much for that. 5, 10, 15, 20. Ekon says a prayer to air and touches Evie. Evie, you have freedom of movement. Oh, wow. How long does that last? Like an hour. Okay. Thank you. Uh, bonus action. I need... Let's see who's coming up next. Uh, I guess bonus action. I need this Mifit to uh, give me a DC 18 strength saving throw. Uh, okay. <laughs> if he does, he's a champ. He is not a champ. <laughs> Clear the room a little bit for Evie. Okay. Uh, that is, let's see, I moved 5, 10, 15, 20. Let's get a little bit more cover. Uh, hold on. I want to get near that Mifit 25, 30. It's the end of Ekon's turn. It's Edmont with Evie. Edmont. Hey. Bad uh, juju happening in this room. Yeah. No, it's a, this entire room is shrouded in bright light. Unless... This particular square, considering that he's got two, like, pillars in between me and him. This guy is burning so brightly with fire. Let me double check that. I think it was 30 of bright and 30 of dim. Yeah, 30 of bright and 30 of dim. So dim light okay. is basically over in this room. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, then I'm going to go ahead and... Do you guys my not recognize Eldov's favorite spell? <laughs> That's a sure flame. That's great. I love it. <laughs> what is it? Adventure of Flame. Some... Investure of Fire. Investure of Flame, yeah. It, it, well, it, it, it's a fireman that shoots fire. <laughs> well, basically the spell reads you in fire, but this is not a man. This is a trap, so enjoy. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and crack the uh, whip at that Mephit. Sure. 23 to hit. 23 will hit. Is this one? Yeah, Orson's attacked this one before. Yeah. Yeah. Nine points of slashing damage. And that's enough. Why don't Orson and Edmont give me a dexterity saving throw, please? I literally think I can't fail this. Uh, 16. Uh, three points of hot mud damage, which you can cut in half if you pass the save. 29. So Edmont takes none. <laughs> Edmont just like, all the beefets could just explode on him all day long. Yeah. Does, does not Second matter. Attack. <laughs> Second attack will go there. That's a 15 to hit. A 15 will hit. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at 12 points of, of slashing damage. Okay. Very good. Also, we were here, giving him a kick while I'm uh, while I'm moving. Seems excessive. Twenty five to hit. That'll hit. Uh, Eleven points of bludgeoning damage. And it is bloodied. As Edmont makes his way across the back wall, having to walk like a schmuck. I know, right? So cool guys teleport. <laughs> Who's next? It's going to end my turn. Oh, Evie with purple. Evie, you are yeah. restrained, yes? Nope. Uh, oh, that's right. You got, yeah, you were released. Now, I do have a way I can hurt this thing, but I can't do it and sneak attack at the same time. So let's see. What do I want to do? Uh... 
I'm sorry, Kurt, that was that the investiture flame was years ago, so I don't I did not remember that. Apparently in subsequent books they added stuff like investiture of ice. <laughs> yeah, they did. There's new no, me fit right here. Seven four elemental evil evils originally. Uh that's gonna be a twenty to hit. Twenty will hit. My poor Mifit who did nothing wrong. <laughs> I think this is the one who restrained me. That is the worst sneak attack I have ever seen. 20 points of magical piercing. Ah, he's bloodied. Uh, bonus action to disengage. Does this thing have sentinel? It might. Uh, I'm trying to move, does it? No. Okay. Freedom of movement also stop opportunity attacks? No. Okay. It gets you out of grappled, though. Mm. Ah. Uh, five, and, um, yeah, I'm going to spread out. I don't want to have us all be too close together if this thing does another big burst. I will stay there, and that is the end of Evie's turn. Okay. And if someone, if a, someone is adjacent to this thing the next turn... I can attack it. Uh, we've got purple with red on deck. Purple's dead. Okay, red. Red still has movement to use. They use all their movement. One of them can get here. One of them can get here. All right. Do they want to dash uh, in? You're gonna. Uh, you're gonna no, have to uh, drop them onto the map. You're gonna have to pick them up again. There you go. Thank you. There we go. Uh, I can't get one more step. No. Hey there, boy. Uh, Orson. Hey there, boy. Yep. And I'm going to say Genie. Sure. Uh, dexterity saving throw, please. Okay. Uh, that is a... What's seven? Plus seven. F Fifteen from Orson. Okay. And from Genie, that is a significantly less than that. That's like a nine. Uh, the nine fails. Yep. But Orson passes. Ah! I'm going to reroll that. I thought that was too low. Uh, no, two points of radiant damage, which <laughs> Orson can cut in half. As this one casts a sacred flame at Genie, this one casts a sacred flame at Orson. A uh, sacred flame is no damage on a miss. Oh, then yeah, you don't cut anything in half then. Okay. Uh, how much on Genie? Two points. <laughs> Radiant damage. That's with their up jump cantrip damage. That was just a terrible roll. As yeah, these two of men rush up to the top of the stairs. They look like they're out of breath, as though they've used their previous turn taking dash actions for halfway across a map. They get to the top of the stairs and fling sacred flames at you guys. And that was red. I've got Victor with black on tech. Okay. Um, so the magic weapon choice. didn't hurt the giant fire thing, right? Which means... Damage might. Does it take an action to open and close the door? No, no. you get a free item interaction every one of your turns. But you will okay. have to be holding one of the spell focuses in your hand for these particular doors. Uh, the ones north and south? Yes. Well, the one to the south is, I think, is open at the moment. Because the idea was I was going to attack one and then run into a room to be safe. You can do that. As long as it doesn't require action, yeah. Yeah, you can attack the guy, then flee. That's how you yeah. avoid damage and Eevee doesn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so we're going to attack this Mephit up here at the top. Listen, rogues take a lot of shit for, like, constantly retreating from danger like that. But that's how I play a rogue every time. Like... I don't want to yeah, be red. Anything. Red was good. Red almost never died. Uh, is it 25 hit? 25 does hit. Okay. The only reason I, he died is because he fell from like 600 feet up in the air because of an airship. <laughs> got thrown off an airship. Red was good, but Birdie was like transcendently good. <laughs> <laughs> Literally transcendent. Um, That's going to be 41 points of sonic damage. Oh, my oh, wait, poor. My, sorry. Not that one. My poor me fit. 41 uh, 35. That's 35. Uh, let's, oh, you know what, though? He's a 
fairly centrally located Mephit. Let's get Edmont, Genie, and Eevee to make me a death birth save. It's a dexterity saving throw. Uh, that is an 11. 16. I think 11 passes. You said an 11 does pass? Yes, 11 does pass. Edmont can literally cannot fail these saving throws against the death burst. So yeah, it's, uh, six points of fire damage, which you can cut in half with a pass save or ignore with evasion. You know, whatever you gotta do. Uh, Okay. Still got 10 hit points. This is um, a weird play for me because I ignore basically every source of damage if I make the save. But you keep getting restrained. Yeah, I do. Not anymore. So we're going to then we're going to bonus action offhand attack the one south of uh, the tank. Okay. Yeah, that is a 16 hit. Sure does. Please enjoy two points of sonic damage. Okay. That which which one were you attacking here? The one. Okay, that's what I thought. And is Victor moving or staying put? Uh, Victor is going to go through the door. Okay. Who's next? Okay, we have uh, Mephits with Genie. Great. Uh, just just so you know, this is a tiny. It does not occupy the space. So, so like when you move up to like kill Genie. Yeah, she's do that right now. Yeah. I got your back, Burp Road. Yeah. Or did they wreck her toys first? Genie. Yeah. I have an 8 to hit. No. And an 8 to hit. No. And a 17 to hit. Uh, shield. Okay. As the three Mephits closing in around you, each try to pummel you with their attacks to no avail. Yep. That's it. Got Genie with Orson. Okay, uh, I... The if... Thunder damage... I'm assuming fire isn't going to work. Probably not, no. Um... I'm not worried about cold's chances either. So I'm going to cast Thunder. I don't want to do Thunder Wave or Shatter. Let's do Shatter. Okay. Uh, shatter is a 20-foot radius. So, no, it's a 10-foot radius. Yeah. 20-foot is Fireball. <laughs> I need a Constitution saving throw uh, from... I'm centering it on this man, so five. T it probably would get. I think it would get both these Mephits and probably the turret. Okay, where are you? What squares am I looking at here? I'm centering it. And it's a ten foot radius. It's a ten foot radius. So you get one Mephit. Oh well, in that case, I'll just center it here. No, okay. that would get me. So yeah, you can get one Mephit in the man, or you can move it over and get two Mephits, the man and you. Yeah, just one Mephit in the man. I, the, the, the Mephit is Lee's bonus. Okay, Mephit has... Uh, so any constitution saving throw, DC 18. 11 on the save. Okay. Uh, if they are made of an inorganic material, they take uh, this disadvantage on the save. Oh, well, I mean, he already failed the save, so... Right, yeah, I know, but like him and the man... <laughs> Uh, but yes, he is made of inorganic material. He's a Mephit. Yep, that is a... Really eight. So, I need two. Okay. Uh, that is 20 points of thunder damage that you can cut in half if you fail, if you pass the save. And that Mephit is bloodied. Mm -hmm. The man on fire is completely unharmed. Okay. Uh, sh uh, uh, Ed, uh, Genie yells, uh, Ekon! <laughs> Dispel magic! <laughs> Who's next? Uh, we've got Orson with white token. Oh, I, I guess I pulsed my turret, too. Okay. 
Uh, I'll just do that real quick. Yeah, that's... Eh, it's fine. You, me, and... You and me are the only ones who'd get it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's literally six. I don't think... Oh, yeah, I've yeah. got more than that. Yeah, so do I. Orson's turn? Oh, Orson's turn. Uh, Orson is going to take a step forward. And the one in the square with the turret. Okay. Uh, does a 13 hit? Yes, it does. Okay. That's... Well, that's so Orson. The only way Orson can miss these guys is by rolling a nat one. Uh, that's a that's a ten, ten points of damage. That's enough for him. So Genie and Orson are in that death burst. Okay. Uh, and the turret. Is, and the turret. Uh, the turret automatically fails deck saves. It's an object. Seven points of damage. Uh, let's see. The turret's got about half of its health left. That is a two passes. Okay. So, how much? Seven points. Seven points. Oh no! Uh, fire damage, burning mud damage. Oh. Four. The good news is it also exfoliates. So, no. Jeannie still has ten hit points, but okay. she is missing some hit points. Uh, that is. He's going to take another step forward into this square, and he's going to attack this one. Okay. With his second spear attack, that is a 15 to hit. That will hit. 11 points. So that's going to be a death burst for Genie and Orson. Okay. And the turret. And the turret, the turret just automatically fails. Uh, that's a failure from Genie and Orson passed. Four points of fire damage from the blowing up defeat. Okay. Genie still has one temporary hit point. And Orson takes takes two points of damage, and then uh, but on this last Mephit, uh, that's a hit. It's, it's a not a nat one, not a crit. <laughs> uh, six points, but, butt damage. Okay, that's going to be a death burst for Genie and Orson and the turret and Edmont. Mm -hmm. That is nine points of burst damage. Edmont passes. Uh, Orson <laughs> passes. Genie does not. So Orson just steps forward and mops up the rest of these Mephas, just splattering them left and right like they're yeah. cockroaches. He's got a rolled up newspaper. Good job, Orson. 68. You said nine? Yep, yeah, so that's... Okay. That's the end of Orson's turn. Got white with Ekon on deck. Okay. Genie and Orson. No. Uh -huh. It's a dexterity saving throw. All right. Orson got a 19. Genie got a 3. Okay. Twelve points of fire damage. Uh, which Genie can cut in half for passing the save. That's uh, the Orson. Thing. Or Orson passed the save. Yeah. Uh, the turret is in this fire as well. As he yeah. throws fire forwards and again snakes along the ground. Up your legs and up your boots. And yeah. it stands put there. Uh, my turret has like 28 hit points left. How are Orson and Genie looking? Are they okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Is Orson okay too? Yeah, he's he's fine. They, okay. We've both had tip hit points for most of the fight. All right, just making sure. Yeah. Okay, who's next? We've got Ekon with Edmont. Is, uh, sorry, did White finish their turn? Yep, that was it. Okay. Uh, Genie, back me up here. I'm going to ta cast Dispel Magic and target the, the uh, statue. Okay. So all spells third level lower are gone. Let me know how many I have to roll for that are higher than third level. It is a sixth level spell. All right. And this with is that. a wisdom check. So I need to get a 16. My wisdom bonus is plus 5. Genie, can you help with that? Uh, yeah, another plus 5 if you That's fail. That's 16. Okay. All right, so Genie, you used your reaction to help him bump it up? Yep. Okay, you mark dispel off. the magic, and for a moment, Ekon, you feel like you're not 
powerful enough to bring this thing down with your own miracle before how does genie do this uh she like, it's basically her uh pointing out weaknesses in the uh, in the spell work carry the one <laughs> yeah she's like there it's it's like the the spell work needs a little bit more support on the lower uh our our toll like it's like the the engraving over there is a little wore out concentrate your spell there that kind of stuff for a moment there's a blinding flash in the center of the room as the thing keeping the magic together burns through all of its heat and light in a fraction of a second and then the room is dim again right the light back to normal yep okay so five ten fifteen twenty uh, let's go ahead and actually 25, 30, make fireballs a little bit less good. And then, uh, which way this stair goes down too, right? Yes. It goes, if you, so uh, if you're standing on this square. Strength saving throw from this person. Are you going to shove my man down the stairs? Yes. <laughs> uh, not with a 20 on the strength save, you won't. Okay. Oh man. That's the end of Ekon's turn. We got Edmont with Evie. This is a man who's been pushed down the stairs before, and he's not going to let it happen again. I, my, other priest, my other better priests of error have pushed him down the stairs. <laughs> That's what Chris does for fun. He pushes, just the acolytes just pushes him to the stairs. Why are they training? It's a, it's a faith test. Who's next? Like Would you give me that? Ball? Yeah. Would you give me that line of sight, Brickra? What are you trying to do? Uh, teleport. Uh, yeah. Right. That would not have been action. possible before, but the investiture is gone now. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to teleport there, and I'm going to crap my whip at that guy. Gross. At uh, advantage, because that's how this teleportation works. That's a nat 20. Okay. <laughs> Simo Belmo over here. Yeah. No, wait, you have sunglasses on. You can't be Simo Belmo. Home three flexes in one fluid motion for 11 points of slashing damage. Okay. Very good. Second attack. Uh, 15. A 15 will hit. Uh, 10 points of slashing damage from that second hit. And he is bloodied. It must be. End my turn. It must be awful to like have everything, all the big threats in the room. Gotcha. Be, de with purple. be dealt with, and you just being one of like the two remaining red shirts. <laughs> Evie? <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I say, Eka, thank you for dealing with that statue. I don't think anything in my kit was going to work. This guy's super bloodied, right? Yes. All right, well, I'll bash him for some non lethal. See if okay. I can knock him out. Uh, is it 28 enough? 20 will hit, yes. Alright. Uh, no, this isn't a sneak attack, I'm sorry. Uh, he takes 11 points of non-lethal magical piercing. That is not enough to knock him out. Alright, well, um, bonus action, I can offhand with my dagger. Okay. Stab him a little bit. <laughs> A little uh, stabby still. Open, so I probably missed. Well, one misses, yes. Yeah. Well, I tried. Staying put there? Yeah, that was all my movement. All right. Who's next? Uh, next up, we've got purple, which is, I believe, dead. Nope. No more purple. And red. Okay. Uh, uh, make a check here. Okay. Oh, I think Evie is about to have a bad time. It's possible. About to? I think she is having a bad time. Well, let's see if I hit first. Uh, this man's going to step forward. They're a little more dangerous in melee range. Evie. Yes. 
I have a 16 to hit. No. And a 19 to hit. The 19 will hit. Okay. Last time I used this spell, I killed a player. Do it. No one's died yet. Please tell me it's inflict. Oh, wait, hold on. The 19 hit? Uh, go ahead and roll that again at disadvantage from uh, Blinding Light. <laughs> I was waiting for that. That turns it into turns it into an 18. Uh, 18 still hits. Okay. Evie, both men, one of them is already standing in front of you. Another one steps forward. And they reach out and try to grab onto your... Uh, just try to grab you with their hands. One of them only clasps part of your cloak. The other one grabs a hold of your arm. And... Mm -hmm. 26 points of necrotic damage. Is that an attack? That's an, well, it's a spell. But it's a, an attack spell? Yeah, it's a spell attack. It's a spell attack. I can use uncanny dodge on this. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, it's, you, a, yeah, you it's can a, see the creature, right? Uncanny dodge is anything from it to hit rolls. Does that have that right, Destel? Uncanny dodge is anything you can see that makes it to hit roll, yes. Yes, this was a to hit roll. So. Okay, but I'm using my reaction to cut that in half. Okay, so... He reaches out to grasp you, and you dodge uncannily. He manages to only graze part of your arm, so you can cut that 26 13. down to 13. Okay, as was, oh, you just feel the there. place of your arm bruise and necrotize as the flesh starts to come unraveled. Yeah, that was think... only my 10 hit point, so Evie's still not even hurt. All right, I'll spawn I, I would... in five more of these guys. I, I think it's a little disingenuous to like <laughs> brag about killing a level one wizard. Listen, the important thing is it was a lot of it was a lot of fun. That was nodal, right? That yeah. was nodal. It's, it's like the first encounter of the campaign. Uh, so just be, these men are absolutely fanatical. They're not going to back down and they know that they're not going to win this fight. Who's next? Uh after red, we've got Victor with the Mephets are all gone. Victor, you're in the closet. Victor's going to come out of the closet. He's out and he's happy. And at full hit points. <laughs> and he, runs, he rushes around the corner and says, Don't worry, Evie. I'll knock him out for you. <laughs> and then he proceeds to throw a dagger. Now you can't do a non-lethal ranged attack. It's got to be oh, that was sarcastic. within five feet. Oh, okay. I'll knock him out permanently is what you meant. <laughs> I just want to point out, Evie is missing two hit points. Uh, which which of these two guys is the bloodiest? So for all e Victor's cowering, Evie's not looking much worse than him. So the one in front of Evie is it is as bloodied as you can possibly get. The other one is looking pretty fine, pretty okay. Yeah, I would okay. Make, I would we're gonna uh, that one. we're gonna we're gonna bonus action hunters mark the one that's perfectly fine. Yep. And then we're gonna hit it. Make him not perfectly fine. He's not gonna be perfectly fine for long. Yeah, it's probably going to be it was almost a 20, but it's not. Does a 14 hit? A 14 does hit. Okay. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Not that song. Let's go damage. No more singing from you. Uh, that's going to be 29 points of silent damage. Yeah, he is bloodied now. Three ones and twos. And moving your staying put. Um. He's seen what happens when you get near pillars, so. Okay, who's next? Genie with Orson. Genie, fix it. Can you be the guy? Uh, not for both of them. But, uh. You don't have, like, acid splash or something? Come on, man. Uh, no, I currently have Mind Sliver, Firebolt, and Ray of Frost. Ah. Um, kind of hard to place where leaves the house without acid splash. That's all I'm saying. I don't get enough cantrips, honestly. It's my <laughs> yeah. only flavor of glass. Uh, I'm going to attack this one. Okay. Yeah, they're both ex horrifically bloodied at this point. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. That'll hit. Can um, you do less than one point of damage? No, I can't. And yeah, he is finished. Okay, and then Orson's gonna come down here, and like, I don't think he can actually miss these guys unless he rolls a one. Well, he might roll a one, you know, and embarrass himself, bring dishonor okay. on his family. Uh, 
No, that's a crit. <laughs> <laughs> we have something in the MMO world, Bricker, that's uh, talk shit, get hit. <laughs> uh, for he had thirteen he points. Had, he had three hit points left. He's, I, I, he's I, I, I know, but I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not going to not roll the dice. And yeah, again, these roll... cultists, as far as armament, they have the red robes, and if you search them, you find that each one has a spell focus to power their spells. Uh, but nothing else of note, as the room once again falls silent. And right. unfortunately, that's where I'm going to have to leave it for the week. I do have to step away earlier than usual this week. So I'm going to go dark for a few minutes while I add up some experience and set up a struggle, and I'll be back in about two minutes. Okay. Who uh, was the most creative today? Uh, let's see. Well, there was a few. Um, you know, the dispel magic on the trap? Yeah, we can give that one to uh, Dessel. Wasn't that your idea? Yeah, but I didn't have it prepared. Destel did. I we we literally had a discussion. Like, eh, I, we're not gonna need dispel magic. I'm not preparing that. <laughs> so Destel gets credit for it, for you know reading the assignment and bringing the proper pencils. <laughs> uh, who for the party's goals the most today? Uh, Edmont was leading the way in most of the dungeon. Uh, Edmont, you, I, I, I do want to give you, uh, that's fine. I also want to get, I want to give, uh, Edmont badass. Cause I've been, I watched all of your, uh, attack rolls and you consistently rolled sevens and eights on damage. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that is really cool. Yeah. I've I was hitting pretty hard today. That doesn't happen. Of course, small guys. And I want to give, uh. My suggestion is Victor for intangibles. For coming hiding. out of the closet. Yeah, okay, yeah, that for being in the closet. And then don't be in the closet. Be yourself. Be your best. Exactly. Come out of the closet. Be your best. You. His like his place though is in the closet. I was hoping Evie would get the badass for the threat. It didn't work though. Like yeah. the thing is, is like 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 Evie like Evie is has high has sky. I think it's good that Evie has the expectation she does right, if that makes sense. But I think everybody in the group is like Evie is like pie in the sky, like expecting diplomacy here. Like yeah. Like diplomacy goes out the as far as genie's concerned, diplomacy goes out the window when they set your house on fire with us with a firebird, right? Yeah. <laughs> also, the suicide bombers. Like, it's a suicide, you could, I think you could come back from suicide bombers, right? But like so firebird is whoa. Ces, <laughs> firebird is ces, cessation of talking. You know. Yeah, I don't it's know. a good thing you knocked that guy in the closet out because Victor was gonna kill him. Uh, he's gonna just live in that closet for now because I don't think he can open that door. Not if he took his holy symbol. Yeah, he took his holy symbol. He can't. Plus, he's also manacled. So he's gonna starve to death. All right, shrug emoji. Who wants some X plants? Uh, I do. I need like fourteen thousand for a That's whole plant. boatload of cult fanatics. Steve Buscemi's. Fireball bombers and more mud mefits than you can shake a stick at. Everyone is taking one thousand one hundred ninety-six experience. One one nine six. Is that statue worth never... zero experience because it was a trap? Correct. Gosh darn it! <laughs> still took a still took a uh, spell slot to deal with though. <laughs> Uh, my, my my troll for the dungeon. You know how it is. Uh, no, I believe it. <laughs> I figured I would eat up two turns when people try to attack that thing, and I think that's exactly what happened, because Orson tried to attack it, and then uh, Genie used a shatter spell, which is what, level two? Yeah. Yeah, so level two spell slot, all you accomplished was take out one Mephit. I'm happy with that. 
it erodes the strength of the and party. a level three cell slot. Then yeah, no, that thing. The party's the the strength of the party has indeed been eroded. Well, the level three slot was it was the, was a uh, dispel magic. Yeah, that's, what spell. It, that's what took it out yeah. in the end. Yeah. All right. Who wants to make a case for their blips this week? I can go. What does Victor have? Uh, oh, I'm kind of neutral. Whatever it takes. That would be hiding in the closet to avoid being burned. <laughs> That's more like uh, it's more like uh, chaotic chicken shit, but okay. Yeah, it works. <laughs> uh, for ideal, seek the truth no matter the cost. That would be on the verge of cutting off the cultist's finger to get him to talk until somebody yelled out and got our attention. See, my problem with that is that torture demonstrably doesn't work. You can't get the truth that way. I feel yeah, like, yeah, I feel like it's Ravenloft. Gotta you gotta try. You take all his fingers. Does Victor just like to collect fingers? You can come clean if that's the case. You know, by the end of this campaign, he might. <laughs> well, he has zero now. All right. What up? Do you have your flaw? Yeah, flaw of values, knowledge over people. That would be just walking up and killing the guards without saying anything. We all did that. It's fine. We, it was. It was what was coming. <laughs> he wanted in the tower. They were in the way. Many of the encounters in this dungeon are not designed to be negotiated with. No, There's and not we're one. not really trying to negotiate them. If he's <laughs> Evie's trying that with every single guy. Evie's yeah. trying not to kill them. Evie, do you want blips? Do you not want to give me blips? I mean, you, you, you're the one who's got to make a case. You've got to tell oh. me what you get blips for. I'm not going to tell you. Oh, okay. Um, got it good. I'll do my duty, but I will always be true to myself. Uh, for basically staring this guy down and saying, come at me, bro. <laughs> okay. Uh, ideal... Must become a leader others can believe in for securing the password to the tower from friend using her magic. Okay. Flaw, no one understands for really not wanting to kill these people, but they just aren't willing to hear her out. So in this case, it's the cultists who don't understand. Well, yeah. I mean, her family, they're defending themselves. She's not mad at them for that. Except for the guy who got dragged into the middle of a suicide bomb. Evie thought that was a little... Mm, <laughs> I, well, but... Edmund's evil. It's fine. <laughs> By the way, I've done it the other way where I've run uh, D and D games and other kinds of games that have these the same kind of system at the end for accumulating experience. Where I was as the DM trying to keep track of player actions and matching them to their stated. That is psychotically difficult, and it's not satisfying for anyone. And that's why you. That's why you. That's why I make you do it, the, right. the players. Yeah, like it's it's, it's just a, so much bookkeeping on top. And if you miss something, the player just gets mad at you. Like you didn't. I did this thing because I thought you would, and then you didn't. And so it's why do you just not like me? Like yeah, I don't like you. Get the, out of my house. I think you did it. <laughs> you told like when you sat me down when I was brand new. You said we're gonna do this for a little bit. Uh, I'll 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 write stuff down, and then like eventually you're like, all right, training wheels are off. Well, yeah, because you'd never experienced a system like that before. Right. So, like, you did it for, like, two yeah. or three adventures and flump of the... Yeah. I, don't think I, and then... I don't think I made that offer to Solitaire, though. I think I just threw him in the deep end. Right, like, maybe you Solitaire's think... been watching the sessions for a well, long yeah, time. Well, so yeah, so you've... Kind you've... of aware of what it was. You said you've played, like, World of Darkness stuff before, hadn't you? Because that's where I... I... I played D&D before, but I was new to 5th edition. Ah, uh, well. Uh, anyway, who else wants blips? I can go. What does Genie have for me? Uh, my ideal practical solutions to impractical problems. Uh, you web up the guys and then you drop a fireball on their head. Yeah, that's what you do. That is very effective. I concur. Uh, I've, uh, I've seen it happen. <laughs> and my flaw, don't worry about it, it was just a setback. For having, I don't know if you remember this, but Destel and I had a conversation at the beginning of the session where he was prepping spells. He's like, do you have Dispel Magic? And my response was, no, why would I prep Dispel Magic? I don't need Dispel Magic. Guess what happened? <laughs> and then uh, Genie wasted a spell slot and then had to look at Destel and go, Destel, I go, Edmont, Dispel, I mean, Ekon, Dispel Magic, please. <laughs> and then the video. Okay. That was pretty delightful. And who's next? I can go. Edmont, what have you? Uh, I have my ideal life as my canvas, and I will make my mark on it for kind of leading the charge in here. He was kind of at the forefront of the exploration part of this. It is literally impossible to hit you with death bursts. 
we're we're gonna need a a, a tougher class of me fit. And Edmund doesn't Which get out. Which kind of dovetails with my my uh, my flaw. This world is filled with predators of prey, and I sure as hell am not the prey for all of those deck saves that literally do not matter. He's like, I wipe scarier shit than you off my boots. Yeah. <laughs> it's and then my uh... okay. You have your alignment. Yeah, my alignment. Lawful evil. Blood runs thicker than water. My own blood thicker still. For uh, for shackling up this guy here in the closet, and then like, oh. Victor's trying to, trying to take his fingers off. Okay, whatever. But you know, Evie stopped him. I didn't stop him. He got stopped by Genie calling for there was attack coming. Uh, what does Ekon have for me? I God, would have listened uh, if Evie tapped him. Lawful good. The shining words of air lay down a path for us all for you know cleaning out a tower filled with evil cultists who yep. are not not following a shining path of air. It's kind of Ekon's adventure. Yeah. Um, well, I've got my ideal. We'll make it out somehow for relieving Genie of her inevitable. Or I'm sorry, relieving e Evie of her repeated and inevitable attempts to be uh, immobilized. <laughs> and uh, I've got my flaw. I'm sure there's something good over just over that next hill for knocking the guy out and leaving him there rather than just killing him. Okay. Oh, an initiative. Okay. And who had the most creative solution to a problem this week? Uh, that was uh, Ekon for bringing Dispel Magic. <laughs> That's one of those, like, always bring it. Because you never know, right? Yeah. I, listen, I bring Featherfall. Yeah? I so, can't do that one, so that that's a good division of labor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, who, did, who did the most to further the party's goals this week? Uh, that was Edmont for his can-do attitude. Who was the badass? Uh, I would also like I voted to give that to Edmont as well because he rolled consistently high uh, on everything this session and was basically invincible. <laughs> so we're gonna give that to Edmont. Yep. Uh, intangibles. Uh, Victor. For being in the for, closet. For he, being his best. He is the most intangible. And Jeannie has her poll. Uh, nobody spent any blips. So these are all rollover blips. They're currently worth 666. Uh, Edmont, you're rolling five. Ekon, you're rolling five. Evie, you're rolling three. Jeannie, you're rolling four. Victor, you're rolling four. And, okay, give me, now, give me a second here. It's like very, very carefully... Save this map. By the way, Evie gained a level. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I actually come into next session with two blips after gaining a level. Okay. Same. How are you that close um, to gaining a level? I'm 400 from a level. Sad face. I had Honestly, 135 at the beginning of the session. Honestly, I think Destel is going to um, maintain it. Uh, maintain a lead over a lot most of the rest of the party because of his uh, his willingness to cover initiative. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, uh, in trouble with his video blips. Yeah, but I don't let yeah. I don't let saving throws fail when it comes to blips. I guess I don't do as much stupid shit as everyone else though. <laughs> All of that. So Genie, also, not every not every session has combat, so trouble's gonna come out ahead because every session has a video. Every session, well, yeah, every session has a video. Uh, so Genie and Ekon, you're coming in next week with two, so you can level up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Then we come back next week. We will do the second half of. Kristen's Crystal Tower, the penultimate adventure of Ravenflum. All right. All right. Thanks for playing, guys. See you next week. Cheers. Later. Later.